So we just won the state champ. <laughs> In our last two videos, we qualified for the FTC State Championship. I won't go into too much detail about the game, as in previous videos, we had much more in-depth explanations. To summarize, we got cones, we got poles, we put the cones on the poles, and that's pretty much the game. Each match starts with the robots moving from pre-programmed instructions, which switches to driver control after 30 seconds. Now, this should be an easy one to win. All we gotta do is cut the other team's wire. You can't do that. We, we can't? We can't? While we are first ranked in the state, some other teams haven't competed since December, so we're not sure what level they're at. We know we're going to have to up our game to make it to the World Championship. There are two spots available to qualify for the World Championship from this competition. One is for the winning robot team, and the other is for the winning Inspire team. But we'll get into that more later. So if we want to get there, we're going to have to upgrade our Autonomous. <laughs> So the problem with our auto is that it's too slow. We can only grab two cones from the cone stack and place it onto the junctions. We might be able to drive faster by increasing the speed, but that will cause more inaccuracies, as the faster the robot goes, the more inaccuracies it will create. We do have one solution though, odometry pods. These wheels roll on the ground, and based on the rotation, we are able to accurately track the position of the robot on the field. This shouldn't take too long, right? Turns out we were really stupid. Our mechanical team is really dumb and put the wheels too close together, which Open causes CV the position to be visually off. So when the robot goes back straight, it goes way off, yeah, off in the Roadrunner yeah, dashboard, which yeah, causes yeah, an autonomous. Yeah, it just basically flips on itself. And they don't talk about this inside. Oh, it's like Roadrunner's emotional Why would it work? I'm in pain. So anyways, we can do a one plus three now, although sometimes it just doesn't work for some reason. Anyways, guys, competition's tomorrow. Let's go. For the most part, our matches are going pretty well. We've won both of them so far. We actually set the competition record for our first match and it still hasn't been beaten up to this point. Everything is going well, and it looks like we might win this competition. Engaging. So yeah, we tipped the robot while manually controlling it. That might be a bit of a problem, because you know, we didn't do anything for like a minute and a half. But our alliance partner, Nuts and Bolts, carried us through the rest of the match. Even though they could only reach the low poles, they were very efficient and incredible partners. Our fourth match started off smoothly, finally scoring a 1 plus 3, though we did not get parking points. After Autonomous ended, we began to stack cones on the high junction while our alliance partner grabbed cones from the stacks to start creating a circuit. We continuously stacked cones on the high junctions, but we were getting out stacked. As the match neared its end, we grabbed the beacon, but unfortunately missed and the match ended with us winning. 130 points to 122. Even though we were only against one robot, the score was very close and we almost lost. We needed to win all of our matches to guarantee a spot in the elimination matches. This was a very impressive performance from the opposing team plus three robotics, and we started looking into them for a possible pick for the alliance selection. Our last qualification match started and our auto wasn't working right once again. We continued to cycle cones as we usually do, but the other team had a strategy that we didn't expect. They cycled together, perfectly timed onto two junctions, keeping their score about even with ours the entire match. We scored one final cone as the buzzer rang, and soon the final score was revealed. We lost. The score ended up being 152 points to 133. Luckily, only one team in the division had won all of their matches, putting us in second place, guaranteeing us a spot in the elimination matches as a captain. Now before we get on to alliance selection, we have to talk about judging. 
Last night, we presented our team to a panel of judges. Over half of our presentation was dedicated to our outreach. For the last 10 months, we have participated in many events to aid our community. Our goal in outreach is to help the community in any way we can, even if it is not related to robotics. We've done parades, community service, and more. If we perform well in the robot game and judging, we could win the Inspire Award, given to the team that best embodies what the program is about and would qualify us for the World Championship. We went into judging feeling confident and gave it our best. Back to the competition. We decided to go over our options for an alliance partner. This time we get to choose two partners that we can switch out for each match. Our record from the first match still hasn't been broken yet, so our partner from that match, Technical Terrors, might be a good pick. But so could Nuts and Bolts, the team that carried us in our second match. And then there is also Plus 3 Robotics, the team that almost beat us solo in our fourth match. We had several more teams on our list, but we ultimately decided on Technical Terrors and Plus 3 Robotics. In the first semi-final match, our auto failed and we started behind. The rest of the match was really close, and at the time the match ended, the live score showed a tie. We ended up winning with 189 points to 160 points. For the second semi, we played with plus three because we knew that they could cycle very well. We changed up our strategy where we grabbed cones from the stack while they cycle, and it worked. We won the match with 181 points. The finals began, and for the most part, the auto worked well. The Alliance tried slowing down our cycle with placing a cone in the ground junction, but it didn't phase us. We continued cycling cones onto the high junction and ended with us winning 155 points to 105. Everything was looking great. We were going to win our division, but then disaster struck. During our autonomous, we rammed into the wall, knocking a monitor into the field, and shortly after driver control began, our lift stopped working. We tried playing some defense, but the other Alliance was performing really well. They ended up winning 222 points to 103. The first match to cross over 200 points with no penalties in the state. We rushed our robot off the field to see what was wrong with the lift. Both alliances have won one match now, meaning that whoever wins this next match wins the division and gets to compete in the state final match. Since we aren't sure what is going on with our lift, we decided to send out our two alliance partners to compete in the last match. Plus 3's auto messed up and Technical Terrors parked in the wrong spot. As the match went on, they couldn't catch up. The match ended with a score of 114 points to 210 with the other alliance winning. While our alliance partners did well, we lost. Now there is only one way we can make it to the world championship. The Inspire Award. In the state finals, the alliance that beat us ended up winning giving one slot for worlds to Squires of the Lab Table. Throughout the awards, we sat anxiously as a word after a word went by and we didn't win anything. And then, it was finally time for the Inspire Award. And now, here's what the judges had to say about the winner of the Inspire Award. This two-toned team took the judges by storm. They took their alternating current to their community and to victory. Congratulations, Team 14436, Roaring Robotics! We just won the State Inspire War two years in a row. We will be competing in the World Championship in April, and we're not done making changes yet. Okay, so all we wanted you to do is do a few different poses and then we'll start. Really? I'm a place here too? Oh my god.